Hello guys and welcome to this, our review of probability for our year 9 maths course. Now, there are lots of videos coming, hopefully you are enjoying them. My name is Darren from Maths Guru. Do me a favour if you can, can you subscribe to YouTube? It just lets me show that you are watching. Nothing more, nothing less. It's a tiny little click from you, but it means the world to me, like huge amounts, yeah? Also, leave me a comment on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube, just to say hi, really, really appreciate it. It gives me a little bit of a G up to keep recording these videos. All right, what are we dealing with today? Review of probability, haven't you been doing that over and over and over and over and over and over again? Absolutely, but in year nine, guess what? It gets a little bit more challenging. So let's review the basic stuff before we move on a little bit later on. Right, so what are we looking at? Understand and remember the key terms used in probability. There's a lot of language in probability. Understand how probabilities can be expressed using numbers, okie dokie, and be able to find the probabilities of some pretty basic events. Yes, happy so far. Now, while it's a new topic this year, as I say here, just don't get tricked. It's so important that as we work through, you use the correct notation, right? So later on in the course, not only are you gonna be dealing with PR equals, you're gonna end up with N in brackets equals. And my view of it is if you don't write these properly, you actually tend to lose marks left, right, and center. So please, please make sure your notation is correct. And always cancel down with fractions. But let's get into this. The language of probability, a random experiment. If I toss a coin, then the chances are I'm not gonna be able to guess what comes out from my uh, coin. I, I, can, I can try and take a good guess because I know it's either gonna be head or tail, but I can't know for certain. The reason being is it is random, all right? Again, if I had maybe 50 friends and I wanted to invite them to a party, but the venue turned around and said, well, no, really, really sorry, you can actually only invite 10 friends. Well, I might then go, well, how am I gonna choose this? Because and you'd want a random way to try and find them. And as I've done here, is if you notice, uh, when you get your CAS calculators next year, if you haven't already got them, if you have, awesome, there is a fun function there called randint. And what that does is if I do randint, the first number is the lowest number you want. So one, the next number is the highest number. So by writing that one there, I've got the number one to 50. So those are the numbers I want, comma, and 10 tells me how many numbers I want. And what you notice is, there we go, that first section there gives me 48, 46, 8, 26. So if I'd numbered all of my friends, that was like me effectively putting numbers in a hat and pulling them out. The calculator's done it a lot, lot easier for me um, to do. And to prove it's random, I did it again. And what did you notice? I didn't get 48, 46, 8, 26, 21. I got a whole new set of numbers. It appears that 48 was quite popular in that one. And again, when I did it again, it came out with a completely different set of numbers. Now, because your calculator is not overly clever, what you might notice is that we actually got one twice there. So I'd have to look at that and go, oh, okay, well, I've got to do it either again to get 10 completely different random numbers or just choose one more number to try and place that one. Right, so in many experiments we do, the chances are they're going to be random, right? We're not gonna be able to guess with any certainty the outcome. We might be able to guess but we won't know for certain, and then it wouldn't be random. Now, one of the things here that is very, very important in this topic is a sample space. Now, a sample space has very specific notation. Firstly, it starts with the backwards uh, three, which is actually E, uh, I think it's epsilon if I'm using Greek correctly there, and it always has curly brackets. Now, I am terrible at drawing curly brackets. But what you do is you put inside those curly brackets all the possible outcomes that might happen from an experiment. So as I say here, these numbers here may well be from a die. Yeah, all right, so there we go. That might well there be for the die because I know the possible numbers are gonna be one, two, three, four, five, and six if we're dealing with a standard die. So again, if in an exam you don't put the curly braces, uh, wrong, all right? If you just put the numbers, wrong. Generally speaking, I would always make sure you do the backwards three because that's going to show your examiner, hey, we got a pretty savvy dude here. They know what they're talking about or dudette. I'm so sorry. I don't know where that came from. Yes. But don't forget the commas. So many people forget the commas. Now looking at the event, an event is a collection of outcomes from an experiment, all right? So for example, it may well be that again, if I'm looking at rolling a dice, an event might be rolling a number greater than three. So in which case I might say uh, A, and I'm gonna put two dots there, is a number greater than 
3. Now sadly with probability there is a lot of writing. We can actually make this shorter by actually saying something of a sort of greater than 3. That might be also acceptable. But notice I've put down here some sort of letter that describes my event. Yes? Um, and in that situation, what would we have? So for example, we looked at rolling a die again. The event rolling a number greater than 3 would have the outcomes 4, 5 and 6. Yes? And as I say, this is an example of a compound event because it contains more than one element in the sample space. Yes, notice the language here. Finding the probability an event happens. Now, I always tend to do this a little bit differently, but what you really have to do is you must start everything with PR and an open bracket. Now, inside the bracket, you would have to write what it is you are looking for. So I might, for example, say odd numbers. So when I'm rolling a standard die, which we know has a sample space now of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, if I wanted to find the probability that I get an odd number, I would want, well, the number of successes goes on the top. Now, success is an odd number, so the number of odd numbers. Well, I know for a standard die there's 3. Divided by the number of outcomes. Well, how many different outcomes are there? Well, in this situation, there are 6. So 3 on 6 which gives me one half. And again, one of the really big things here is you must always cancel down. If you don't cancel down, particularly in any exams I put, you won't get the marks. You are expected to finish it off for me. If you don't know, check. If you don't know, check. See what I did there? Twice. Check it and check it again. All right? So you must always write PR and in brackets the event. Afterwards is then your answer. Numbers of probability can take. Now, again, I've marked a methods exam once where somebody turned around and said they could have a probability of 1.4. No. What is the maximum probability you can have? One. What is the minimum? Zero. Like zero is no chance of it happening at all. One, absolutely certain, no chance whatsoever, whatsoever. So for example, is there gonna be a day tomorrow? Yes, I hope in this strange world we're living at the moment. So the probability that there'll be another day tomorrow is one. Even if I'm not here to see it, the chances are there will be another day by the construct that we've set up. So probabilities can go between zero and one, and they can be decimals. So I can have a probability of 0 0.4, or I could write that as four on 10, which we would cancel down to two on five. So we can have decimals, we can have fractions, and then it would seemingly make sense that we could also have percentages as well. So percentages, so we can have 0% all the way up to 100%. And for probabilities, it's never going to get any higher. I know in other subjects in maths, we can have greater than 100%, all right, because we can do increases and whatever else. But for probabilities, the highest is going to be 100%, all right? Lots and lots of people get these questions wrong by not putting the answer in the correct form. And the best way to know that is if the question gives it to you as a decimal, they're looking for a decimal as an answer. If they give it to you as a percentage, percentage. If they're giving it as a fraction, as a fraction, right? So that's just a, a word. Now, the last thing here is the language of probability tells me that there are times where we could be asked to give worded descriptions. In general, we would probably use the following. Now, again, I've seen zero chance. I have seen even chance and I have seen certain chance. So I've seen those three. Can't say off the top of my head I've ever seen low or high chance, but they are there, right? So low chance is somewhere between zero and 50 and uh, high chance is somewhere between 50 and 100 if we were dealing with percentages. So again, let's just have that there. Very few people pay me compliments. Do you know why they don't pay me compliments? Because it's, um, no one watches my videos, basically. Anyway, there is a difference between a compliment, P-L-I, and a compliment, compliment. Now, for example, if I was to tell you that at the moment, the probability that it is going to rain, and we're in Melbourne, so that's pretty much 100% on any one day, <laughs> uh, the probability it is raining is gonna be 0 0.4. What is the probability it's not gonna rain? Well, if you look at the language there, we've only got two choices. We've got rain or not rain. Ah, hold on a moment. The probabilities must add up to 100, yes? Not in this situation. Why is it not 100? Because they've got a decimal value. It would have to add up to one. So I would say the probability of it not raining is equal to 0.6. And you're going to try to say, well, hold on a moment. You wrote rain there. So we've got to come up with a notation that we can use to say not rain. Well, one of them is actually a bar over the top. So you do a bar over it to say not rain. Another one I've seen is rain with a little dash. Again, I'm not that keen on the dash because again, I might miss it. I like the line over the top. So a complement is basically the opposite of, 
I, the probability that, you know, uh, oh, it's snowing or not snowing, the probability I win the lottery or not win the lottery, there are only two choices in all of those. And where there are two choices, we can say that we have a complement. Again, another way of writing it is by saying the probability of not A is equal to one minus the probability of A. So the probability of something not happen is one minus the probability it will happen. And again, we could write that as the probability of A with a bar over it is one minus the probability of A, or the probability of A with a dashed is equal to one minus the probability of A. And again, Barry has been on fine form with probability because why do we need 47 ways of doing it? All right, let's do some examples. Thank you so much to Cambridge for allowing me to use your examples. You guys absolutely rock. Could not do this without you. Well, I could, but it would take a lot, lot longer. And wow, your textbooks are awesome. Right, this spinner has five equally divided sections. List the sample space. Now, we're back to sample space. So having already taught you the theory, don't then get tricked into me giving, uh, you know, or doing the wrong thing. List the sample space using the given numbers. Find the probability. Oh no, hold on, that had to be a dot first. I remember I needed to update that. One, list the sample space using the given numbers. So my sample space there is curly brackets. One, two, three, three, and seven. They are all my possible in outcomes. Income? No, outcomes. And again, you're going to say, but you've already got a three in there. No, no, no. I've got two threes. They get listed. Now we can go on. Find PR3. What is the probability of getting a three? Well, firstly, the number of successes, the number of threes. There are two of them. Out of the number of outcomes. One, two, three, four, five. Two on five. Can I cancel that down? No. Check it again. No. There we go. So the probability of not getting a three. Well, hold on a moment. There's two choices. I'm either going to get a three or I'm not going to get a three. So I can now do two, one minus two fifths there, which gives me three fifths. And again, if you're not sure why, think of cakes. You've got a cake. Someone's eating two pieces of it. How many you got left? Oh, sorry, I've got a cake split into five pieces. Someone's eating two pieces. How many have got left? Three. Find the probability a three or a seven. So the probability, and notice three or seven. I am writing inside those brackets the words of what I'm trying to find. You can't just put an answer. So the probability of three or seven. So how many threes or sevens are there? There's two threes and a seven. So there are three possible successes out of five. Can I cancel that down? No, not a deal. Find the probability of a number which is at least three. So that's greater than equal to three. I'm using notation here because at least includes the three. So at least a three. I've got one, two, three again. So again, that would be three on five because it would be the numbers three, three, and seven. <coughs> And there we go. Those are those questions done. Is there another example? Oh, a letter is randomly chosen from the word probability. So I'm going to write P R O B A prob ab il i t. All right. Find the probability of getting a letter L. All right. How many L's are there? There is one out of how many letters in total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So one on eleven. Find the probability of not getting an L. Well, I'm either getting an L or a not L, so there's a complement there. So I'm gonna do one minus one on 11, which gives me 10 on 11. Fabulous. Let's underline that, we'll make it clearer. The probability of getting a vowel. Now a vowel, if you remember, is an A, a E, a I, a O, a U. So uh, there's a vowel, there is a vowel, there is a vowel, and there is a vowel. So I've got one, two, three, four, out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven again. So four, because there are four vowels there. What's the probability of a consonant? So I'm just gonna write consonant. Well, a letter is either a vowel or a consonant. So once again, it's a complement. Now I could add up all the consonants, but alternatively I could do one minus four on eleven, which gives me seven, eleven. No, nope, seven on eleven. Anyway. Probability of a vowel or a B. All right, so a vowel or a B. Well, I've already got one, two, three, four vowels. I've got two Bs, so that's going to be six on 11, because a vowel or a B, there are, what did they say, four vowels and two letter Bs. Da, 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 da. The probability that it is a vowel or consonant. Well, hold on a moment. That seems a bit silly, because a letter is either one or the other. So as far as I'm concerned there, the answer is going to be one. 
And believe it or not, that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it's been helped. It's been an introduction to probability. My name's Darren from Asguru. Please follow me on TikTok if you want. Follow me on YouTube if you want. And uh, leave a comment. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you in another video. You take care, guys. See you again soon.